Hello guys, welcome back. Key Knowledge 2, Outcome 3. Staying with Operations Management, today we are looking at something called the Operations System, which we kind of introduced the concept of in the last video when we talked or introduced Operations Management to begin with. We did mention this. Basically, what you see right in front of you now. As soon as you see Operations System, in a question, your brain automatically goes to inputs, processes, outputs, always. If you see operations, system, those two words, that order, inputs, processes, outputs, nothing else ever, always that connection, okay? If you do that, you're gonna be heading down the right path with your answer, okay? Here's our snapshot of the study design, and here we see it. Key elements of an operation system, inputs, processes, and outputs. This is a pretty simple one, guys, but a really important one because the questions on this tend to be, they're really easy to answer, but there's a couple of small things that trip people up and actually can cost you a lot of marks, which we'll get onto once I've covered some of the um, earlier stuff here. So inputs, process, outputs, like I said, that's a connection always make. That's what you need to see in your brain. As soon as you see operation system, you see that. Inputs, bang, processes, bang, outputs, okay? Always. Just expanding on that, inputs, what are inputs, what are processes, what are outputs? Um, inputs, um, there's some examples, materials, human, technology, capital, so on and so forth. These are various inputs. Inputs, think of them as like the ingredients. Don't use that term, but they're the ingredients. They're the resources that you use, and I'll give you definitions in a minute. Um, they're all the resources, all the ingredients that go into the ultimate production of your product or your service, okay? And we'll expand on those again in a minute as well. Processes is basically the transformation process which adds value, okay? So we've taken all of our inputs, we do something to them which adds value to them, and then that ultimately becomes our output, which is either the good or the service that we're selling to our customers. In terms of processes, that obviously, it depends on what the business is, and also within a business, there can be many, many different processes. There won't be just one process, okay? Um, and again, that will become apparent as we kind of move through and look at some examples. Okay, but focus here, inputs, processes, outputs, always when you see operations system, okay? So let's take them in term, okay? So that's to define operations system, okay? A series of procedures, processes, I won't read the rest, you can do that. So that just is a definition of operation system overall. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now let's take each of those three elements in term. Okay, so inputs. So there's your definition for inputs. The resources used, 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 used to produce a particular good or service in the business. Simple as that, okay. They can include, and now we're going to expand on what we saw before. So raw materials, which is unprocessed inputs sourced from primary producers. So like farm produce, minerals, water, basic raw ingredients. Okay, some examples right in front of you there. Component parts. So these are processed parts usually purchased from another producer. So for example, ready-made engine parts in the car industry or the cakes a restaurant sells if they don't make them themselves, but from a supplier. So if you think of a restaurant, if they make all of their food from scratch, then all of their, the, the, the food ingredients are all gonna be raw materials. But some restaurants don't make necessarily all their cakes or, or their bread, for example. They might buy their bread in from a specialist baker. Then those cakes or that bread that they've bought in as is, are what's known as a component part. So in terms of our material inputs, you've got those different categories, your raw materials or your component parts. Okay, I don't know if you'd ever be asked about this, but it's worth having in your notes. Um, human resource inputs, this is basically the human effort expended in your processes, simple as that. Capital plant and equipment, um, any human made object, tool or machine, that assists in the production process, okay? So cash also can be referred to as capital in business because it can be quickly converted into capital items. In other words, you go and buy them. Um, plant refers to kind of bigger 
um, machinery. Buildings would be including plant, but big, like non-movable machinery and, and equipment would be more your smaller stuff that can be shifted around. Okay. So when we say plant in business, we're not talking about green things in pots. We're talking about big like buildings, factories, or big physical machinery, which is kind of stuck to one place. Okay. Information and knowledge. Okay. Also an input. Um, intangible, um, which often is overlooked by management. Okay. Often you only realize how important information and knowledge is in your business when a particularly experienced or knowledgeable employee actually leaves the business and then you realize what they've taken with them. So it's really, really important as far as possible when you are losing experienced, knowledgeable employees before they leave that all of that knowledge and export not so much the experience but the knowledge that they have is passed on to other people in the business so that it's not lost okay and time okay time is a resource um it's non-renewable once it's gone it's gone um, and if we're wasting time that adds to costs in the business okay so really really important one now moving on to processes okay there's your definition this is where the inputs go through some kind of transformation process to become the outputs that ultimately sold to the customer. Okay. So look, a couple of examples there in a cafe or a restaurant, you know, one of the processes is going to be, you know, making the food in the kitchen and another process is serving it to the customer. Okay. Both processes. And you could break down obviously the making of food into lots of different processes within the kitchen as well. But if you're looking at just the production of the food that is sold, you could umbrella it under the production of food. But whatever is happening in a business that converts those inputs into outputs, and like I said, that, there could be thousands of those in any individual business, depending on what that business does. Outputs, the most simple one, the tangible good or the intangible service, that is the result of the operations process, which is then gonna be sold to the customer, okay? So there you have three pretty solid, reliable definitions of each of those elements within the operation system and with the inputs, just some examples of different inputs that might apply. And again, you draw from that whenever you're faced with a particular case study or business, you would draw from that list, which ones are appropriate or relevant to this particular business. Okay. Now, um, outputs. Tick, tick. This is really the key part of this video. Like I think everything so far is pretty easy to understand, but this is the really, really important part um, because over the years I've seen so many people lose marks on these questions for kind of like silly errors that they didn't need to make. Um, and it can, it can cost you quite a bit in terms of marks. So this is really, really important. What I've done here is put up um, 2018 in the end of your exam, this was the question. And this is a really typical type of question that you see associated with this key knowledge dot point, okay? Describe the key elements of a particular business's operation system, six marks. Okay, we've seen this type of question a couple of times over the years. This is one example of it being used, like I say, 2018 exam, but this is a really typical um, type of question to see. Describe the key elements of this business, six marks six marks is a really really common um marking uh scheme or mark allocation um you might already picked up on why that is but in a minute it'll be obvious um this is just the rest of the case material there so don't need to worry about that um now this is how you always structure this type of question okay six marks it's three times two okay so you take it as a three times two -er. first off with inputs, you define what inputs are. You now have a, de a definition for inputs. And then you provide examples from the case. Then you move on to processes. So define what processes are. And then provide examples from the case. And this providing examples from the case, because the definitions are going to stay the same, whatever the business is. It's this providing the examples that you need to think about and make relevant to the case you're talking about. So drawing those inputs, which ones are relevant to this case. Sometimes in the case material, you'll be told, you know, th these are some of the resources they use. These are some of the processes, sometimes not. But if you're not, it's never gonna be 
like a business that you wouldn't understand like what they do. So you would always be able to come up with them yourself. But very often, like in this one, in this particular case, I'm taking you through here, within the case material, most of this stuff was sitting in there. You just had to kind of draw it out. And then finally, outputs, define output, and then provide the example from the case. Now, example from the case, it might just be one output. Like if you're an ice cream manufacturer, the ice cream is your output. In this particular case, it was kind of a multi-dimensional business. There were a range of different outputs because they were selling different products and services within the business. Um, so again, it depends on the business. So this is really simple. Three times two, three definitions and follow each definition up with specific examples from this case. And once you've practiced a few of these, you'll see very very straightforward but here is one of the rubs okay this is where this is the key and this is where people go wrong um this is um an answer to that particular question okay um so you can read through that this is a good answer but it's really possible to write something that's super super similar to this but which is not gonna score you all the marks. Actually, and I'm gonna come back to that. And the key here is, look at the wording. Okay, I should have maybe highlighted this, but I didn't do that. If you look at the inputs part, okay? So the red part here, you would pretty much do that in any of these questions, depending on whatever the case study is. That's gonna stay the same. It's the green part, which is the examples, which, are going to vary case to case and these are the parts you're going to need to come up with but the wording of this is really important and it's this part where it says for ocean skate hubs operation system this includes and then it lists some examples okay next there is processes in relation to ocean skate hub this may include and then it gives some examples it's really really important that you use that wording includes may include because if you think about it if you just put for ocean skate hubs operations this is their employees the finances the sports products so on and so forth if you say this is what you're saying is these are the only inputs and you're never ever going to list all of the inputs. There's going to be tons of inputs. You're just giving some examples. Same with the processes, okay? You're never going to list every process that goes in a business. You're just giving some examples. So you have to use the language includes. Because if you put the processes for Ocean Skate, Skate Hub are the actual construction, the ordering, so on and so forth, everything you see there, you're going to lose those two marks because then you're now stating something that is not true, it's inaccurate, because it's not those things, it includes those things. The only difference here um, is the outputs. Okay, so again, this depends on the case. You can usually, let's say sometimes, get away with saying the output is, because if there is just one thing that they sell, then that is the output. Again, a multi-dimensional business that sells multiple different products, or services or a mixture of both, you probably still use may include, and then you can list a couple of them, unless you literally were gonna list every single output, so everything they sold and every every product and every service, then you could get away with that. Often though, the output is much more straightforward and it tends to be one thing, but if it isn't, be careful. But very often it's very easy to score four out of six because you could write exactly what you see on the screen there. But instead of saying this includes blah, 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 they say this is. So just transferring the word includes the two there for inputs and processes, transferring that word from includes to is, is gonna cost you um, two marks out of those six. So just be very careful with the language there and make sure that what you're writing is accurate linguistically and that is it for your operation system okay nice and simple i think um, but just make sure you think about the wording when you're answering those questions i'll see you in the next video for key knowledge three which is looking at um, difference between operations in manufacturing and services businesses okay cheers for now